Hey everybody, and welcome to the next Flame Quick Tip. Now, this one is going to be on a technique known as data moshing. And data moshing is where you'll use the background to displace the, a different layer with uh, kind of like an overly used effect, especially now it's in lots of music videos, but it's usually like kind of glitches and you know it will uh, kind of give you an interesting look and like uh, do weird stuff to your footage. You know, you can put something that's static and then have say a dancer running through and that can displace your footage, which is cool. And it's a cool effect that can be used um, for lots of cool effects in that way. Um, but in this example, we're going to be looking at using data moshing to help out um, what would otherwise be unsolvable 3D tracks. So let's jump in. So here's the footage that we're going to be tracking. And if we look at this and play it down, you see it's kind of like a bad case scenario for a tracker. I'm going to loop this. So we got motion blur. It's like a nodal pan. It's this is a this, you know this is a shot that you'll get and you'll kind of sigh a bit because you know it's not it's going to be a pain. So let's have a look at um, so what what I have right here is I've just already cached some motion vectors. But um, first thing I'm going to do I'm going to go okay, let's try the outdated 3D tracker that needs to be put around back and shot because it's really not good anymore for for most of the jobs. So you know it's unfortunate, but I mean sometimes it can work. Sometimes it can work. So let's let's see what we get with an analyze of that footage. You know. And if you are a flame artist, you probably already know this is not going to be <laughs> a solved camera or even close to it because this the analyzer only works on pre-approved kind of shots. And again, sometimes it does work really well and some shots are like that, but there's also a lot of shots um, with what we do where it's not ever like how you want it to be. So this is a, a good example of that. So let's let this do its track. And we got a five error. Let's look at F8. Sorry, F7. Um, let's see what it's like if we. So I'm gonna go F7. So you see, we get, we have a false positive. We have a an error of five, which I'm okay with because it's so much motion blur and there's lots of movement. So you could kind of pass that, right? But the problem is, is the the camera just loses. It just like wimps out, and we lose the camera. So it's it's a. It's not going to happen. We've got too much motion blur, not enough like defined detail. So again, this is one of those shots that you'd usually farm out or have to kind of <laughs> hope that you could hand track it. And that's where it can get even more annoying too, you know, especially, especially when sometimes you do actually want a 3D solve. So that's our bad, bad track. And add its defaults. And you, you know, some people might say, oh, well, you could have added a 2D tracker to help it. And we could have played with the fine tuning, but when it's not even tracking the the result and just dies at the end, it's a lost cause with the 3D tracker. So, you know, that's just the inf unfortunate mess that is the 3D tracker right now. So let's use data moshing to get a usable track that we can use then downstream in the analyzer mono. So what I have here, just so you don't have to sit through it, I have some pre-cached motion vectors of this shot. And for those of you that don't know how to do it, um, just so you can see exactly what I did, I just added it back add a new input and then to that guy I just did no bin M motion vectors pull that out and I just went to object or double click on that analysis and I cache that um, just again because it's it was it was a bit of a longer render like three or four minutes and it's not worth sitting through so this is the that shot with the, the motion vectors cached so what we're gonna do is essentially do data moshing but with tracking markers so here's some tracking markers and and again everyone will have uh, access to this footage that they want to play around with and um try for yourself um but yeah there's a you know i just went online google search tracking markers i wanted these guys because they were uniform and then i've cropped this down to a 1080 um output and then just kind of scaled them so they're bigger so literally that's all that's doing so let's get this ready to track and be a solvable shot so i'm gonna throw that away and with the camera selected, I'm just going to pull out projector, double click, F4, and I'm going to go to tracking, add a reference. And I'm going to scrub back, and then I'm going to go back to the camera, pull out projector, add a reference. I'm going to go to the front, and pull out a camera, add a reference. So I'm going to be going through now, and I want to always fill the frame with tracking markers. So I'm going to go no bin again, projector, double click add 
So now we've got that stuff intersecting, but it's always covering. So we'll go here where there's where it falls apart. No bin projector. Add. And again, I'll keep scrubbing. And I'll go somewhere here now. Double click, add. And let's keep scrubbing through just to kind of make sure it's doing what I want. And we'll go here where it falls apart. Double click, add. And we're kind of going to keep on doing this um, in bits where we see it falling apart just to help with what will be a usable track, hopefully. So again, I'm just going to scrub through. Okay, yep, keep going. I'm going to go all the way to the end. And same thing, no bin, projector, double click, add reference. I'm going to go back up here to where it falls apart. The main thing is just to kind of cover everything with as much as you can. Um, so what happens and what ends up happening, which is cool, is because because we're essentially re-putting stuff back in based on the motion vectors, so really the camera movement, but the the good thing is we're kind of canceling out all motion blur every time we add these. So Because that's the main reason this track is hard too. Um, not just because it's nodal, but because there's not much to kind of lock onto. So again, I'm going to go overboard and just keep adding. Go add. And just keep scrubbing just to make sure. And go here, back to start. And before I kind of pipe this in and try and see if we can solve it, I'm just going to pull out a render node and just make it a schematic reel so it spits it out in front. I'm just going to pre-render this just so we don't have to do those calculations with the projector and the UVs come the 3D solve. So I'm going to let this do this thing. And this will also kind of hopefully show anything I might have missed, but it looks like I've got enough detail to, to latch on to because again we got no motion blur but we're inheriting the camera motion so the problematic thing with this would be is again it, it, because it is a hack is there might not be a lot of maybe real world coordinates you could get out of it but on shots like this you always are going to cheat anyway so I don't really see that as being an issue so let's yeah let's, let this do this, its thing and render through And this, again, this is like a worst case shot. Imagine this on a shot where you have nothing to track and you're trying to put something in on the horizon and there's nothing to track. This is where that would be cool for too. Like there's lots of instances where this could be very, very handy. So again, we're going to pull out Analyzer Mono, go to select it. And if Fred or Francis is watching, having to select Analyzer Mono just to do this is stupid. Can you please fix it? Please. And then Analyze Forward. Let it do its thing. And the other thing to note too with this technique is in my original test doing this, the smaller the tracking markers, the the worse the result. So when I, I initially did this at kind of the default scale and I just made it a lot smaller and I thought that would be helpful for it. But it turns out larger help for this, maybe because there's so much like movement and motion blur, so there's more stuff to track onto, maybe it got less confused, but that's you know also worth noting. So I'm gonna press F7 and scrub through, and instantly it's not doing what I want, which is good. <laughs> so let's see, let's see what we're doing. So I'm gonna go to camera one, the view as the output, and let's add, I'm just gonna select all these points in the analyzer, F7, I'm going to select them, create axes, and then let's just chuck some text in and see exactly what's going on with it. So now with it, that's tracked, I'm just going to pipe in the untouched source and let's just rotate the text so we can see it. And I'm just going to turn icons off and let's see what it does. Okay, so it loses it at the end, which is fair enough. So let's see, like, let's try and refine this. Again, we're getting still, it still kind of wigs out at the end, but let's see why. So let's see. So I'm going to, let's see where it kind of, where is it where it gets confused is the key. So if we scrub through and where it loses it, I'm going to say somewhere here. So let's go back to our rendered thing and see where there's not a lot of detail. So let's, let's do another, add another projector at that frame. And I'm going to go no bin. P, pull that out, I got wrong layer selected, there we go, and I'm going to go pull that projector, go add, and then let's look back here again, like where else 
Could it need some help? Maybe here. So I'm going to go that frame and jump back and pull out the projector and go add. And then let's just scrub through again, see where it might be confused. And maybe let's just do one there to see. And go add. And let's just scrub through again. I feel like the end's all right. Yeah. Okay, so let's render this again and see if we get a different result. So let it do its thing. I'm sure anyone who has ever had to work with a shot like this that you actually have to physically hand track stuff in, you you know how painful it can be. So it's um in from my experience, from the couple times I've used this, it's actually been really good and uh, worth sharing, I think. So let this do its thing. And again, it's worth experimenting. Um, maybe if we don't get a good solve, let's try uh, different size markers again because uh, it has helped me in the past using this technique. So let's let it do its thing. Chugging away. we go come on slowest render ever and there we go okay so let's try let's try another three tracks so I'm gonna do the same thing analyzer mono go to the analyzer tab forward and backward let it do its thing And let's see if we get a complete camera move that matches up over the space of the actual move. Times like now, I wish we had synthized because that would have track would have been done in about three seconds. So here we go. Okay, we got a weirder, bigger error. So it didn't like whatever we did, but let's scrub through. Okay, so we have we have a higher error, um, but let's just see if we change this to pen and tilt if what happens with our error too, because there's not a lot of parallax. Okay, so that's actually a bit better. And it's we're getting at least the whole movement. So let's try the same thing. So let's go to F7 and let's select some points and put some stuff in and see. Again, for something like this, it's heavily motion blurred. So higher errors aren't necessarily red flags because usually what you're going to put in is going to be very mushed so let's go 3d text make that a child and i'll connect this to the back okay and let's jump to a frame that we can see it so there and let's make it bigger and i'll just rotate it whatever and just kill out these keyframes and then let's also turn on motion blur to help it out and go 0.33 and just add a mux after and let's play back. And you see we've got pretty much a really good track. Let's let's put it south too just to make sure, you know, I'm not cheating. Um, let's bring it down. I'm going to go to object, which is a great feature most people might have missed. We have world space and this is where it's always inherent of the world's values but i'm just going to switch it to object so it's easy just to go south let's make it bigger so maybe it's in frame more too so we're not again we're giving this everything we can to make sure that it is a good track and again i feel like the error is higher because there's ju it's just not a ideal candidate for tracking so let's press play now i don't know about you but that looks pretty spot on so let's let's render this and then play it back and have a look so again, this technique, think about it in ways that when you have an untrackable shot, maybe there's not a lot of contrast, but you could, the, the move is apparent. Or maybe there's, again, like those horizon shots, we need to track something, but there's nothing to track onto. Generating the motion vectors and doing the data mosh technique can be phenomenal. And like, here we go, let's have a look. Like, I don't know about you, but like you, you, you have to realize this would not be trackable or easy 
by hands. And the fact that we can cheat it with, with you know, fake tracking markers to essentially get an unmotion blurred thing to track for the 3D tracker. And now all of a sudden the 3D tracker is relevant again. I don't know. I think that's pretty cool. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. Um, let me know if you found it useful. Um, let me know if you have any other techniques for tracking that um, you want me to cover or I haven't covered. So yeah, I hope this is useful and stay tuned for more.